tonight's meeting to order. <coughs> Other select board members with me. Um, Carolyn Luizo and Joe Staub and Tori Nelson. And Tour, do you anticipate any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? Uh, yes, I'd like to add an item about select board pay. Okay. I'll make a note of that and we'll do that later. And next on the agenda, any public comment? Folks that are here tonight or online that would like to speak at this time? Uh, yep, I'd like to talk for a couple minutes. Okay, please do. And state your name, please. Yep, uh, Brett Collier. Um, uh, my mother up there on Scott Hill Road. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Berlin Skating Rink basketball court. I've okay. seen a copy. Okay, I've, I'm. I will uh, email this to you after the meeting, too, to the town clerk's email address. Thank you, Brett. <clears throat> um, I recently saw an estimate of what it's going to cost, and I have some questions and comments. First, my assumption is I understand that for years, right next to the town clerk's building, in the winter we have an ice rink. It's constructed, open to the public, to skate as, weather's, as weather permitting. Is this where the new one's being built? That's correct. Yes. How many people used this rink last year? Uh, do schools use it for hockey practice? If they do, do they have to pay for it? Are any organized hockey or figure skating rinks uh, event held there? Do they pay or is the rink just for unorganized casual skating? I think Basically, it's mostly... just for unorganized casual skating. I'm not mm -hmm. aware of any organized groups that use it uh, doesn't mean that they don't but um you know they're not public sized or anything like that that i would have seen okay um so now that we want to build this new one how many people are we are we projected of using the new rink so that we can compare it to the last has has anyone done a study or estimate or anything like that I'm not aware of any study or estimate. They're good questions in terms of how many have used it and anticipated to use, but I don't believe we've gotten that far in okay. that realm. Would you agree to it? Correct. Her? Yes. Oh. And with all the money, because the, the estimate I saw is $1.1 million. Are we, are we, after doing all this, are we going to start charging people to use the rank? And if so, how much? Well, um, the estimate I saw was about 2.1 million. It, well, there, there's two components, Brett, I'm sure you, you're aware. Um, one is on the rink itself, uh, which will turn it into a uh, three, you know, four season uh, usage, including basketball and pickleball during the, uh, the warmer months. Mm -hmm. And then as you're aware, um, putting a canopy over it with, um, you know, the solar generation on top of that. Um, between the two pieces, my estimate is going to be about 2.1 million. Okay, yeah, I was just looking at the Dubois and King estimate for building the rink. The rink itself, the okay. Park, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I knew there was another huge charge with the solar. Um, in this, in the estimate, I saw that you're gonna that they're wanting to put in a refrigeration system for four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. If we do that, aren't we also going to have to hire one or two people to operate and maintain this thing? And how how would that how would that work? Uh, things to think about, I think. Well, I th uh, I think that yes, and I think you know the electricity usage. Um, 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 both for the you know the rink and for the ref refrigeration part. Um, another thing I've not looked into yet is what's going to be our increase in our insurance premiums because you know 2.1 million dollars of improvements is a uh, is a pretty huge um, jump in my mind. So um, I know Tom Willard is here. Uh, he's done a lot of research on the ice rink, so feel free to jump in, Tom. Uh, Okay, is there anything you have on this? The refrigeration was kind of an afterthought when we were pouring concrete, the refrigerating 
tubing is cheap. So we said, well, look, let's, uh, let's put the tubing in the concrete and if sometime in the future uh, our solar energy can run a few compressors at the marginal times in the winter when you have a February thaw or something, we'll have the tubing there. But, but right now the only thing we're looking at is putting the tubing in the concrete. Um, just sort of makes sense. So just preparing. It's just not just preparing. Yeah, you know, you're not going to get another chance to right. put the tubing in the concrete. So. So, but that doesn't that cost 400. And that's the cost he's speaking about would be if we actually implemented it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that, I think the consultant would have had and, and gave it. that estimate, but it's not part of the project. Gotcha. Good question, Brett, to allow us to consider that, but it's sounding like the 480,000 refrigeration system would be only if we implemented it. Okay. Well, that, that's, I, I was just looking at the estimate and I didn't know what things you're act, actually committed wanting to do. So that's why I'm just asking the questions. Excellent. I'm a huge yeah. proponent of questions because it makes us think of things we might not have thought of ourselves. I didn't even think of insurance, but. And then, you know, once it's built, you know, and, and I and I went a little further, you know, maintenance costs once if it is refrigerated. Again, that'd be hiring someone to do it. And I'm assuming in the past with what you did last year to uh, take care of the rink, it's probably just a guy with a hose. It almost sounds <laughs> like this would be more of a Zamboni type thing. You know, are, are we... Are we going to have to buy a little Zamboni or something? To, to, to are, are we going to get you Zamboni qualified there, Tom? Tom, Tom, Tom is, one, is a gentleman who does that. He's, He's got a couple of volunteers. So. He's, He's a good guy. A little Zamboni would be nice if it's being offered. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got a, we put a hydrant out here. And, um, and you, once it's covered, um, it'd be very easy and not time consuming. And I fully expect that the recreation department volunteers will keep the ice down. Because we just do it for the past 20 or 30 years, however long we've been doing it, uh, it's all been volunteers um, flooding the ice. And on behalf yeah. of the board, Brett, I encourage you to send us the email with your questions so that we can look at them and you know, review them further as well. Yeah, good questions. Okay. Definitely yeah. great questions. <coughs> and, and, uh, you know, the, then on to the basketball court, you know, it, pretty much the same questions that are in, that uh, that will be in the email I send you. you know, do we have any estimate on whether people are actually going to show up there to do this? You know, I, I lived a mile from there. I had a hoop in my driveway. I don't see that I would have walked or biked a mile to run down there to throw a basket. So I'm wondering if, you know, what the thought process was there and if the court was going to be monitored, because uh, especially these days you get people fighting and so forth. Um, what about lights? Are we going to have lights there so you can skate or play basketball when it gets dark out? Yes. Uh, you know, inside the canopy and that, and that was, yeah, I, I, I kind of cut myself off uh, in my earlier explanation that there's another, um, oh, we have lights now on the ice skating rink, uh, but, but it would need to be, you know, expanded for, um, you know, basically all use uh, during the winter, um, even during the day, and then, for, you know, basketball and everything as well. So that's, the increased electricity uh, would, is going to be another cost that's going to have to be factor, factored into it. Yeah. And I just and then, wanna, I just want to add that the the Berlin Recreation Commission is really being active and creating opportunities for kids in the in the town, and has worked hard to get a program set up at the school for um, soccer and. Tom, help me out. Is there anything else? Is it just soccer, soccer right now? Uh, they do volleyball pick up there as, as yeah. well. So I, I do Swim think so. I think baseball. it's hard to 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 say because nobody's come here that they won't. I mean, I'm sure they'll. I'm assuming they will create some organized times for basketball and that kind of thing, or, or at least make efforts at that, because I know they've done a great job over at the school. And I think if we had other opportunities over here, they would work toward um, creating those opportunities for the town's uh, residents and, the, and kids, so. 
Yeah, you, you you are all closer to this than I am, but just from what I've seen, it, it it's almost sounding like it's a field of dreams. Build it, and they will come. I I was just going to say that you're 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 absolutely correct, Brett. <laughs> Um, and finally, the estimate that I saw, they were talking about horseshoes and cornhole. I know a little bit about horseshoes. I'm on a couple leagues up here. One of them, the clay league, in which the other players have about a 70, 80% average. I'm nowhere near that good. Hmm. But $20,000 to set up, uh, set up horseshoe throwing pits. Most of the pits around here are associated with American legions and VFWs. So that when we're throwing, we can have a beer and a burger. I don't think I don't think we're gonna allow. We, I don't think that's gonna be happening outside the town clerk's office. You you probably wouldn't want people showing up with twelve packs and throwing horseshoes. So no, but you might want a family oriented activity. So I think that it's something to think about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I love horseshoes. I well, I play a lot, but that's uh. I was just trying to think it's out. Build it and they will come, maybe. So, well, that's, I, I, there are a couple other comments, but instead of taking any more of your time, I'll just email this to you and, and let you figure. Thank you. Thank you, Perfect. Brett. Thanks, we Brett. appreciate you. And thanks for taking the time with that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Any other comments from anyone before we move forward? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Fast <laughs> Corridor Management Agreement and Level of Insurance 2024-2025. Okay, uh, so we have uh, David Rulo from Fast here tonight and uh, Wendland Bowles online uh, for the Conservation Commission plus a couple other members of the Conservation Commission. Um, so every year we're asked to approve the uh, corridor and management agreement uh, between uh, Vast uh, Thunder, Chicken, Thunder Chickens and Northfield Snowmobilers in the town uh, to use the trails on, a, on a Irish Hill. Um, one qu question that's come up this year and it's on the second page about a third of the way down is on the insurance coverage. Uh, for the past couple years, uh, it's been set at um, three million uh, per incident and aggregate of six million dollars of coverage. And the request is now if, if it's time to re-examine this amount and if there's a better um, amount that we can use. So with that, I will turn it over to Dave. Cool, thank you. Uh, thank you Dave. For the group that doesn't know me, uh, Dave Rule, I'm the president of the Berrytown Thunder Chickens. I've held that role for about 20 years now. Uh, certified snowmobile safety instructor as well. I serve on the Bass Safety Committee as well. So I've been doing trails, working with landowners for a couple decades here and promoting safety all around. Um, so yeah, this year it kind of jumped out on me. It's always been the three, six million in there. And I've always kind of had in my head that it's been the one and two that's kind of what is generally accepted out there it's uh, meets the state like um, the state guidelines what it's doing and so kind of as it kind of came to attention this year that's what it was i'm thinking wow it should be the one and two that's what everybody else is doing um, so we kind of talked about at the BCC group, and, and then I know it went to you guys back in May, and I kind of thought it was a formality, so I apologize I didn't come that night to, to speak to that, but glad you guys are reconsidering that and hearing me out. So I just want to take a time just to kind of speak a little bit to the history of how we got to that. And it really goes back, this trail, we taught, started talking about it back in 2011 before Hurricane Irene. Um, Irene came, it destroyed a lot of the uh, trails over Northfield, so we kind of stopped and then the pandemic came. We kind of got back to it in 2021, um, you know, we went through all the approvals and, uh, and got it in there. So at that time, um, the coverage for Vast, uh, they were going through a carrier, it was a three and six. Um, at that time, you know, Vast, every year it's like a carrier would drop them. They'd have to go visit another one and get coverage. So every year was the same thing as I was in the budget period. It's like, we don't have coverage. How do we get coverage? So they started thinking, how do we come self-insured? 
And as they were doing the research and the discovery there, they found out that they had been overinsured all these years up to three and six, and that wasn't in line with what the state's guidelines were. So when they became self-insured, everything kind of came back down to the one and two million. So actually the last, I think, two years, the coverage that we provided to the town was the one and two. Uh, nobody noticed it though until this year it came up. So I'm just trying to lobby just to see if we can get the corridor agreement to be the one and two, which is really in line with the state guidelines. Um, 80% of uh, the vast trail system, 4,500 miles or so, is on private land. There's about 9,000 plus landowners that accept that one in two million. The other 20% is uh, state-owned land, municipalities, uh, easements uh, like uh, the Darling Trail is like that. And those, to my knowledge, are all the one and two as well. So that's kind of, I'm just trying to get it aligned back down, you know, where I feel it should be. And that's kind of, you know, in, in line with the state guidelines. So, and now some of the recommendations coming from the, uh, uh, the BCC too were kind of around the steepness of the trails up there. And I think, you know, with education and signage, I think we, we can control that steepness. Uh, as I've been traveling up in there, I haven't seen a lot of recreation, especially up in the top uh, part of it because uh, it is steep, that's not where people like to walk as much. Tom, I know you spend time up there. I don't know if you go up all the way or where you stop, but uh, usually- Not often. <laughs> not often. But usually with signs, to me, it, it's been education. You know, we clearly bark, you know, where there's no snowmobiling, and more importantly for this coexistence, this is a snowmobile trail, so people out walking dogs, snowshoeing and stuff, they know where they're at, they know that it's, it's kind of like walking on a road. Snowmobiles are motor vehicles, and this skier on trail is the other big one that we have, and that's really telling the snowmobilers that this is a shared use thing, so it kind of gets them to woe down the, the machines, and some of that steeper terrain, it's out there all over the place, Vermont, is not flat we're constantly going up and over terrain and you know that's where we use the signage to try to uh, keep the speeds down the safety in check and um, just the train itself by nature slows the snowmobilers down too i mean you can only go so fast when you're going up hills and, and stuff so um, it's a it's a pretty slow use so um, so yeah, you control speeds with speed limits or, or uh, no? You it's can. Um, if you're on uh, state land, so that's usually railroad beds, the speed limit is posted at 35 on frozen bodies of water, which we don't encourage. The speed limit is 55. Other than that, is reasonable and prudent operation of the snowmobile. Um, if you wanted to, you could put a town ordinance in there for say 15 miles per hour and have it posted. But without an ordinance, you can't post a speed limit. Um, and how do you uh, enforce it? Uh, how do you enforce it? Uh, law enforcement, uh, state police, fish and game, and local county sheriffs um, are all uh, trained in law enforcement and they actually do have sleds out there. Um, in addition to the hats I wear, I'm actually the liaison between Washington County Sheriff and the 12 volunteer snowmobile clubs in Washington County. So um, there's an issue going on somewhere. They call me. I issue uh, Mark Poulin and uh, Brett. Uh, Meyer and their crew and they're out there if we know there's a problem Thursday nights up there We'll have them be up there on sleds on snowmobiles. So uh, they've uh, partnered with us over the years It's been great to make people honest legal. They're out there checking to make sure that the sleds are registered They have the valid vast TMA on it and they have their uh, proof of in liability insurance as well So in addition to the insurance that's provided here that I'm asking for each snowmobile has their own insurance So you treat it just like a car accident. So if I ran Tom over, he's got my insurance to go on too if I was malicious or negligible. Thing. I wouldn't run you over, Tom. You'd go to Gusto. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's a lot of things kind of working towards safety. Can, can I just ask, because I'm an insurance regulator, um, why were they not renewing your policies? Um, it's just they drop you all the time. Um, I know one year there was uh, people that rode across Lake Dunsmore. They weren't even on a vast trail or near one, but there became a vast settlement out of that. So they would drop on that and it just changes. I have a snowmobile garage up in Williamstown. I just got a notice of non-renewal. The carrier just decided for whatever reason they don't want to cover a snowmobile club. Um, 
So my agent, um, they went and they found me another carrier of the same exact coverage, same exact price. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of what Vass was faced with. But, so there were claims that, uh, that caused the I know the Dunsmore one was yeah. a claim. I'm not privy to other stuff. I could research yeah. that no, and I'm find out. But I think a lot of it is just a potential risk <laughs> liability, and yep. they just, they're just they trying to ensure things where they don't ever have to pay well, anything Well, the insurance market's hard now. So. Yep. yep. Um, and the other question, are all the other towns, so all the other... In your, as far as you know, Ed, that's the coverage, standard coverage. It's a standard For, coverage. And every, there's no one else at yeah. the 3-6. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm the chair of the uh, Town of Barrie Recreation as well, so I, whore a, I hold a contract with the Town of Barrie for the Thunder Chickens for a disc golf course that I oversee, and I work with them with Millstone Trails. All those are uh, yeah. corridor agreements are the one and two. And if anybody comes to us hosting a cross-country race, anything like that, it's always the one and two that the Town of Barrie is asking. Yeah, well, that's the minimum. To so be, that's, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. it is only a minimum. Minimum, just yeah. to be clear it but, is yeah. yeah i've never seen anybody yeah. ask uh, for over that and is it typical that it's a multi-use trail or is it uh the town of berry forest is heavily multi-use okay. uh because as they've got disc golf cross-country skiers fat bikers dog walkers i mean it's actually been modeled as a very nice coexistent model and then we got the land trust here represented shaking his head but uh, yeah we've been invited to summits and leaving leaving things that how do you do this and the answer is education yeah. you know every everybody has to educate their own clientele of the other people out there and yielding to everybody and it's worked yeah. out great great okay good it's wonderful um, you're here with us, Dave. I was going to ask you, how are the bridges holding up that you put in in 2021? Um, I haven't been bridges? up there. I know it got washed out one time, and I believe it, and Todd on public works here. I think it's Todd. He's also on the north. Tim? Tim. Uh, Tim, Tim. Yes, I think he went up there with Josh Walker, and I think they, yeah. they put the recent washout back, but I believe it, it's holding out very Great. well. Excellent. Yep. Thank you for that. Um, Wendy, uh, I know the Conservation Commission has studied this uh, pretty extensively. Is there anything you want to jump in on? Um, just let me check. I think Dave has covered a lot of it. Our main concern has been liability with the shared use trail that is steep. And I'm not sure if Barry has that same steepness that we have. Um, and I guess the, the big question, you know, it's turned over to the select board because we don't really know a lot about coverage and are not comfortable making that decision for the town, whether the town is completely covered should there be an accident up there. Um, and I think when this first, um, when we first um, had Bass come onto the trail, I think the whole three six was reviewed by an attorney I'm not absolutely convinced that I don't remember completely, but I believe Vince had attorney review the agreement and review the insurance also. Um, so that's sort of why it's sitting with you. Um, let me see. Yeah, I guess the big question is, is the town really covered should something happen? And I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, on our question on the steepness in the town of Barry, we don't have that kind of steep grade, but we do have a lot more other recreational users out there, so a lot more potential hazards. On um, the steepness of the grade, snowmobiles on the skis have uh, carbide runners on them that will kind of chop through the ice, eat through the ice, and then the tracks are studded like a studded tire would be. So on that kind of terrain, icy conditions, uh, you know, the, the snowmobiles go right through it. It's a lot different more sturdy foot and then walking on a f with shoes even if you do have the yak tracks or something on so yeah so very easy to stop the snowmobile start the snowmobile yield to others that sort of stuff in that kind of terrain and then a lot of times uh when the conditions start to deteriorate um the lower elevation yes. trails will be closed Yep, uh, we get a lot of wind down by the Napa Airport, so quite often that is the area that falls off first, and that section of trail leading up to um, Darling Trail is closed. So we've got that closed. We're not running our grooming equipment. People aren't running snowmobiles on it. Uh, they're usually on the other side of 302, um, making their way up to Groton, which Mother Nature is kinder to. They have more consistent snow, and yeah. that's where we start the season and end the season and play in between when we have those January, February thaws. So uh, good point. Thanks for bringing that back up. Wendy, since you, you're more in the weeds on this, would you 
be more comfortable if we did have a speed limit? We discussed it um, initially, and I think we, Tom, please weigh in on this also, but I, I believe that initially we did discuss having a speed limit, um, and then Dave recommended not having a speed limit because um, he said that people would slow down and do what they need to do. Um, I think on Darlin, it's less of Darlin Trail, it's less of a problem because that trail is flat. There's good visibility. No, I'm thinking only on the on the ele on the steep sections, maybe something like that. The, the steep section, um, I don't know if there's a problem yet. I haven't had anybody report a problem, but it is steep. We do not have any alternative trails for pedestrians to use to go up that hill. So. As in Barry, there's a lot of alternative trails for a pedestrian to use. Um, in the town forest, we've got Darling, and then we have the ridge line, and then we have um, the bike trails. So anybody wanting to go to the top of Irish Hill is going to be on that trail. I've also heard that people are skiing down that trail, um, and we don't have any regulation on that, but there are people doing things like that and sledding down it. Not many. Um, but I have heard that. Is that allowed sledding down it? We've never. Not prohibited. Just, I'm never, just curious. We've never tried to address it. Yeah, I'm yep. just curious. If, yeah, well, that's, just... that's just where the, you know, hey, you're yeah. sliding on a trail that's open for snowmobiles. So just kind of being aware of where yeah. you are. And the sleds are quiet these days. So um, I, I think signage and education is the way to do it. So the snowmobilers know you're coming into a shared use. You don't know if it's a dog walk or a sledder, um, yeah. skier or what. So, but just, you know, there's other people out here. So kind of slow down. Do you have any idea how many how many sleds actually run that? Or? Uh, it hasn't been a lot. Last year wasn't real good to us out here, so it uh, wasn't open a lot. The year before uh, our reroute around Nap Airport, there was a really wet spot, and so sleds were getting stuck in it in our grooming, and the word got out pretty good that you come down this way, you gotta go through a mud pit. Nobody wants to run through that, so it didn't get a lot of traffic because of that. And then the year before, first year, I think there was a lot of people exploring it, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, I don't think the, the numbers were high. So it's kind of like a connector trail up and over just to give another loop, a better grooming uh, pattern for the Northfield Club. Um, so, but you know, I think if Mother Nature was nice to us and we had a lot of good traffic, you'll probably see a lot on a weekend as they're coming in, gassing up, getting some snacks at the store and then returning through or passing through. But. I think just a uh, matter of comparison, um, a 10 or 11,000 gallon gasoline tanker, you know, that fills up the uh, gas stations and stuff, uh, they're only required to have $1 million yeah, of insurance. And even, a, you know, a full Greyhound bus is only required $5 million. So there's a big difference between a Greyhound bus and a snowmobile and hikers, so I think just uh, Truly. keep that into a matter of comparison. I do believe the management agreement is well written and we have a lot of um, opportunities and allowances and under section C what's mutually agreed upon. I think that's well written. Um, section 4 has the town of Berlin maintains the right to close the trails to snowmobile use when any of the following are true. If weather conditions make the trails unsuitable for snowmobile use, for example, um, if the use of trails is resulting in degradation of surface waters, and it goes on, we have many, many options there. Um, have there been times that the town has shut the trails down as a result? I didn't believe so. Nope. No, we haven't, but if to do that, uh, we would use the uh, vast <coughs> map, uh, map. We would just close mm -hmm. down, and we'd close down the section of the trail, the whole trail network, um, and then we have the gate that we could physically close as That's well. Right. Yeah, and That's we great. would put a sign at the, I think there's gate at the other end, so we would close gates on uh, both sides in addition. So that's basically the change that you seek is in section B, number one. Correct. To yes. change yep. from the three to six to the one and two. Yes. It sounds like there's not really an alternative. 
Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, they're self-insured. The, so, I mean, if, yeah. if if you guys stuck with the three and six, I either say, go yeah, I'm not going to do the trail, or I go to Vast and say, you got to do the three and six if we want this trail. And then it's up to them to say, yeah, we'll provide that. And if there's an incident, it's going to cost them an extra um, you know, $2 million or... You can get reinsurance, uh, yeah, but I don't yeah, know what that route. looks like so. to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, have a still have a have a above above that amount is covered Umbrella. by somebody yeah. else. But yeah. I mean, I'm. It seems like I'm okay with it. It seems I'm like good with the one and two. Too. I I mean, Berlin is all about bringing in outside. I don't know, other communities into Berlin. You're doing it with the vast trail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like we're definitely an outlier. So, um, and I haven't. I'm assuming you haven't heard of any other towns that were bankrupted because of. <laughs> no, I I'm teasing, but. <laughs> I, I haven't heard of any other. I mean, I, I watch all the time. You never like to see any accidents on the yeah. trails or on the roads. And, you know, as of late, it, it really hasn't been much. And there are, they're, they're on snowmobiles, but they're not even on vast trails. They're in their yard. They're drinking. They're doing stupid yeah. stuff. But it still gives vast a bad name, even though it's like got nothing to do with this other than the snowmobile. But yeah. you just you just never know. I mean, the protection is there for everybody's, and you just yeah. hope for the best. So what I'll do at this I, time is open it up for a motion. I guess, I guess I'm going to do this in two parts. Um, I move to... Reduce the required liability insurance coverage from three million and six million to one million per incident and aggregate of two million. A second. Any discussion before we take a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And then I probably shouldn't make this motion, but I will make the motion that we approve the quarter management agreement between the town of Berlin and the Thunder Chickens, Inc. and Northfield Snowmobilers uh, with the updated section B1 reflecting the new insurance amounts. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So I don't know who drafted this, if you could get me the updated. Yeah, I good. think it's on your computer, okay. I think. Okay. Yes. I, I have it. I, oh, I can update it. I'll update it cool. and get, get it to you, Tor. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. If you, you want to just send me an email when it's ready, myself and uh, Steve Coral from the North, uh, North Hill will <coughs> come in and put our John Hancock on it. Excellent. And we'll be good. Perfect. Great. Thank you all for your thank time. You. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do on the trails. Yep. I know uh, Vast did a lot of work after the July 23 flooding. Uh, Josh Walker and, and worked Tim, extensively yeah. with the Conservation Commission to get that bridge uh, back up. And a lot of volunteer hours was, were put into that. We appreciate all the cool. efforts. All right. Well, thank, thank you for you the so kind much. words. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Cool. Thank you much, guys. Have a great evening. You, you too. too. Thanks. Put a lot of signs up. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but not too many. <laughs> we got to find that magic balance. And thank you, Tom, and thank you, Wendell, and also. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay, so Pray now we'll move like on rice. to the FEMA Pray buyout snow. maintenance yes. agreement. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, business that used to be the uh, tool warehouse on 302 um, in front of the oh, uh, yeah. AutoZone um, <laughs> auto parts store, uh, they have closed and they're interested in participating in the uh, FEMA buyout program. Um, and this is the first step, uh, in, like I said, for the other ones. It, you know, generally it's about a two year process. And, and um, uh, so the first step is that the town authorizes this maintenance agreement, and I will move to um, authorize signing of that. Do we hear I'll, a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. No discussion. Do you have anything you we wish like, to discuss? I like chemo buyouts. Or anyone else have anything <laughs> you wish to discuss regarding the motion? So the building's going to have to be removed, right? Okay. That's all I want. And that, and you know, here again with the other ones, it's not, they're not committed to this. Um, you know, they can back out at any time. I, I know the building is for sale and there's been 
um, some uh, talk between the um, Good, um, Good Samaritan Welcome Center about acquiring that property. So it doesn't mean that this is the direction it's going to end up going. It's just the first step in that process. Just don't want to see another abandoned building down there. Right. <clears throat> Which we have now. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. For a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, Good. next on the agenda is the approval of the warrants and the minutes. Okay, we don't have minutes, but we do have a pretty six stack of warrants. Warrants. So make the motion to pay payroll warrant 25-08 for payroll from October 6, 2024 to October 19, 2024 to be paid on October 23, 2024 in the amount of $67,470.52 to include payroll uh, payable warrant 25G7 with the check number check number 25345 to check 24394 in the amount of $145,095.60 as well as warrant G5, uh, sorry, 25G8 with check number 24395 in the amount of $209,000. And also the general journal entries. Okay. Um, the general journal entries of sept for September. Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion carries on that. Uh, just you. a note on that that second warrant for the 209000 that is for the new loader, loader, new loader. Uh, that came in. Uh, we have it. We've traded in the old loader. Um, that is being paid for by the um, reserve funds. Okay. Yep. And it came in. Forty-four thousand under budget. Yay! And what yep. was the year of the loader that was traded? I'd have to uh, look again. Here. Just curious. Yeah. I was trying to remember. I couldn't quite remember. <coughs> but that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Before we go to roundtable, I know you had the addition of item that you wanted to include tonight on select board pay. Uh, so previously, in in the olden days, I guess I can say that now. Um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> um, the select work pay was a flat rate. Um, after I got off the last time, uh, there were some concerns about the attendance of some of the members, so they switched it to more of a um, per meeting. Right. Per meeting based on attendance. Mm -hmm. Based on attendance, correct. Um, that situation is basically rectified at the time. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we're not having uh, the widespread attendance issues we were having before. Mm -hmm. uh, so the recommendation is to go back to just the flat rate, and mm -hmm. I will make that motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Or would you like to discussion. have a discussion? Mm -hmm. Sounds wonderful. So, um, I remember some of those times when we've had uh, attendance issues, and we've had it well before I was on the board. And it, as much as it may be uh, somewhat rectified at, at the moment, um, do you see down the road, two, three years down the road, now let's switch back because now we have an issue? I think it would be as simple to do as this it could is. be <laughs> is this just is this a math issue <laughs> I don't think so okay keep in keep in mind I don't know how to say this um, in my What's the word I'm trying to think of? In my, in my delusions, 
I would think this would be a decision I could make on my own, <laughs> but I'm bringing it before you anyway. <laughs> Got to up upgrade that job to town manager. <laughs> it is odd that we're, we're the ones that, I mean, whatever. Um, I, I'm good either way. It really makes no difference. I understand your concern, and but, there's not really any way to remove somebody because it's an elected position, but somebody's not attending, they could be encouraged to resign, I guess, but... I know when we implemented it, I was on the select board at the time, and it took some time to implement it. We thought long and hard about whether to put that in place. Um, there have been a few occasions where folks don't attend as much as other select board members, and I've seen that in the duration that I've been on the board. Um, that's not to say that we have that issue currently. It could happen at any time in the future. So if we were to revert back, there is the potential, as you indicated, for it to occur again, and then we'd have to revisit it, per se. Um, the other thing is the amount that has been allotted to select board pay has not changed in all the time I've been on the board. It's been the same since 2011. So it's $3,750 for anyone who does not know that or has not looked at the um, town report, per se. And that is equally divided prior to where we have it standing now, where it's based on attendance per meeting. And then that has to be calculated out um, when it's time to do the select board pay. I'm not opposed to changing it back by any means. I think it's just good to have that open discussion. Yeah, have that history. Mm -hmm. And the history and why and so forth. So I would open it up for a motion if uh, folks desire to change it. We already, well, I think you have, we already have one. Oh, okay. I did not hear that we had a motion. Yeah, we're in discussion. I'm, I'm second. Second. Carla seconded. Very good. So now that we've had the discussion, is there any other discussion? I think, I think Tom is so intrigued by the pay he wants to <laughs> Excellent. We would welcome it. No, the only comment I would make, is, is, that would be somebody non-select board making a comment on this maybe. I don't know what the problems were in the, ha in the past, but, but I do know that select board members aren't keeping track of all the extra time that they're putting in. I know Joe has been around today because the neighborhood has had uh, some kind of obnoxious plastic smell for two or three days in a row, and I don't know where it's coming from, but he was out there knocking on doors asking all my neighbors if if they were bothered by the smell. So that stuff's not being recorded right. on your time sheet either. So right. I just I just wanted to Thank you for noticing. Good job. And Joe. thank you for your efforts, Joe. Greatly appreciated. Did you thank you, Tom. I guess we well, yeah, I know we have a motion, yeah. but did you find anything with that smell? No. I was I was going to drive by and I didn't get a chance to drive by this afternoon. But no, okay. Hmm. So I would now say all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion carries. And now we'll move forward with roundtable. Joe? Um, okay, so next Tuesday, October 20th, Ooh, not this right. Tuesday, not, not tomorrow, tomorrow, a week from tomorrow, October 29th, um, there's going to be a, a public meeting over at the Four Corners Station. And this is in regards to the fire department um, becoming possibly absorbed or Becoming municipal. Yep. So, um, anyone that, that's available, please come on down. Um, ask the questions. The tough ones are always the fun ones to try and answer. And have you had one already? We had one down at the Riverton station. Was it attended? I, I can't remember what you said about it. Was it attended? Well attended? Not attended? Well, my. my guests about a half a dozen people and if you took all the select board and fire department people out we had six so I think I come um, seven anyway so I get there's better participation <laughs> in the, in so I, I'm hoping hoping up here on the hill will be um, as well attended or better and were there concerned well I'm just curious about the comments. there there was a, a list of questions that came yeah from that um, the the steering committee, the town, and the fire department are working to put, you know, those those answers together. So all those questions should be 
able to be answered. Have you heard any I additional do. questions since that evening, or are there any questions that folks here tonight might like to pose in this forum? Have we done any? Have we done any kind of education about it? I mean, I'm just curious if we're getting the. There's word been out some stuff out on uh, front porch forum. Okay. I do believe there has been some stuff out on uh, Corinne's news to know. Um, that that's where the education has yeah. been focused. I just think it's a. I didn't even know. You know, I never even thought about the fact that it wasn't. I mean, you know, that it wasn't a municipal fire department. So I just think that there's a lot of people that don't have no idea what this that, even that's, means. That's the big, yeah, that's yeah. the big part of the educational part yeah. is they'll drive by and they'll see a couple of vehicles there. Well, that's Barrytown EMS. Mm -hmm. Barrytown EMS um, <coughs> is, is housed in the Four yeah. Corner Station. Yeah. And you'll see vehicles there 24-7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a contract in place for that. Yes, there yeah. is. But just the relationship between the town and the fire department, I had no idea what that, you know, the that it wasn't a, you know, I don't want to use the word owned, but a town fire department. It was the, you know, the corporation. So I think that's all, you know. I think it's wonderful we're having these two events too. So that yes, people can I, oh, I totally well. agree. And I asked that question about if you've heard any other questions or if anyone here tonight has any questions, because I think that many people are formulating additional questions, and that's why it's wonderful that you bring it up tonight, that the next one will be, you know, here at the Four yeah. Corners on the 29th. So some of these discussions have, have been had at, uh, at town meeting at least for the last two years okay. in, in some fashion. Um, we did have a non-binding vote um, here at the town uh, about a year ago. There has been a survey that's gone out and, and all oh, of it's good. quite favorable in moving in that direction. Good. Um, Yeah. So I'll see you there, Tom. Efforts on that regard too. Pardon? I'll see you there. What? When is it? The 29th, <laughs> 6 30, Four Corner Station. It should have gone on Halloween it's and possible. gave out candy to kids, and then all the parents would have had to come. We welcome all who can attend. Thank you so much, Joe. And Thank Carla, you. round table, anything? Tonight? Oh, my mind's a blank. I doubt that. <laughs> Trust me, I'm tired. And tour? I do have one thing. Um, I mentioned at the last meeting um, that we anticipate our coefficient of dispersion, COD, will exceed the 20% uh, trigger for a townwide reappraisal. Uh, looking at, um, there are quite a few towns doing the reappraisal process now, and it's uh, taking two to three years for them to, you know, to get through the process, so I went ahead and issued an RFP for that uh, with responses due on November 29th, so give them some time to uh, get a proposal in and we'll see what time frame they're looking at. I did notify the state tax department and they thought that was a good idea, so okay. need more on that coming. Good coming job. Out. Thank you. The only question that I have in round table is uh, what is the status of the applicants for town administrator? I did just get another one last week. Okay. Uh, somebody interesting, so um, we'll be doing some interviews on that. Okay, very well. And I don't have anything else. Um, do you anticipate an executive session? I do. Okay. And is there anything I'm else before we want to go forward with executive session? I'll make a motion. I move that we understood the executive session regarding the negotiating or securing of real estate purchases under 1 VSA 313A2, inviting members of the Conservation Commission and Land Trust uh, as well. Can I hear a second? I'll second. All those in favor? And, oh, and I do not expect any decision to be made. Okay. So you do not expect that a decision made? I still second. All those in favor. Well, I still move. Aye. Aye. Aye.